I came back from a tour. I was exhausted, took a few days off, went up to a place called Whistler, which you may be familiar mm -hmm. with. The Winter Olympics 2010 were there uh, in British Columbia. Had a couple of days hanging out. But what people didn't know about me at that time is, aside from doing the things I was doing speaking, I was also a full-blown addict. Now, when I say addict, I'm not talking about drugs. I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm talking about adrenaline. I was a major adrenaline junkie. I did stupid stuff all the time. And at that time, uh, you know, we, we'd spent the day, we'd had a lovely day out by the lake and all of that. And then we came back to a place called Brandywine Falls, which is this magnificent glacial waterfall. It's about uh, 200 feet up. And the water comes rushing down the fall off the glacier. And in June, you can imagine that it's now nice and warm. The glacier's melting, you know, but it's still the end of spring. So it's still been pretty wet everywhere. And we watch this water come down, and you're, there's a view site. And I said to my buddy, let's see if we can hike down. There's no path, right? <laughs> and we're, in, we're not dressed for it. But he's like, yeah, okay. So we hike down. We get to the bottom. I said, let's see if we can get behind the waterfall. He's like, what are you talking about? I go, there's a gap between where the water comes off the edge and behind there's a wall of rock. And he goes, how wide is it? I go, I don't know. I go, let's see if we can get behind it. Well, it's about four feet wide and, you know, inappropriately dressed with 70 mile an hour spray coming off that waterfall as it lands. We're climbing over these mossy rocks. We get behind the waterfall, which is filled with negative ions. Negative ions make you feel positive. It charges the body positively. It feels fantastic. When I came out on the other side, I felt like Superman. I felt like I had a big S tattooed on my chest and I could do anything. It was like, yeah, we were inside going, yeah. If you had to put your hand out, that waterfall pressure would have ripped my arm off. It was that powerful. So I said to when we got on the other side, I said to my mate, let's not hike back. He goes, should we take the elevator? Huh? And I'm like, no, let's free climb. Now, it, you may be a bit nervous about mountain climbing and think that people in mountain climb are crazy. I understand that. But mountain climbers have gear. They have safety lines. They have hooks. They have all those kinds of things. And you go, well, okay, but free climbing is crazy, right? Well, it's more crazy for sure, but you have chalk, you have the right clothing on, you know, you, you've, you've you made sure your sight is set, okay? Free climbing while you're soaking wet with the wrong footwear on and the wrong clothing, that is insane, and that's what we began to do. And at 120 feet, I reached for a rock, and that rock dislodged a bigger rock that came down and hit me in the face, <laughs> full force, and knocked me right down 120 feet, 12 stories, and I landed on boulders below, not on grass or gravel, but boulders, and my head opened up like a coconut, just split me wide open. I've had somewhere around 10 or 11 reconstructive surgeries, um, and I can tell you the gory details that you don't need to know that. I did die five times during that process. But I was from Salford. I was a tough lad. I was a boxer. I'd been a martial artist. I was a trainer of leaders. You can't tell me, man. I'm coming back. So people would say to me, how you doing? And with my jaw wired closed, I'd say, I'm coming back. I'm great. I'm coming back. It was a lie. It was a positive bullshit attitude. It was a lie. Because when I was in the quietness of my own time, I was deeply, darkly depressed. And I felt like my life was over.